This video is brought to you by GC Pro. From studios to concert venues to live event spaces, GC Pro designs and installs custom audiovisual systems that far exceed your expectations. For more information, visit gcpro.com. I am here with Frank and Andy. Frank and Andy are SEs. Are you both SEs? Yeah. Well, he's SE on this. He's the main SE for Madonna. And you are? Crew chief. Crew chief. Yeah. For? Madonna. Madonna. Celebration yeah. Tour. Celebration tour. All right. Yeah. So let's break it down for the people who don't know what an SE is. What is an SE? Well, really, I'm just a sophisticated caddy for our star golfer Burton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so really uh, designing the sound system, tuning it, uh, making sure that there's even coverage everywhere, making sure that all the speakers are working correctly, and I think most importantly making sure that Burton's mix is presented the same to everyone in the venue. Sure. Now this system is massive. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot going on here. How much of a role did you guys have in the, um, the designing it? Neither of us had a say in the initial design. Sure. That was all done by Burton and Chris Sully from L Acoustics. We both came in once the rig was designed and we have been operating and deploying it for every show. Yeah. Uh, so we've made a few tweaks since the initial design. Man, it's, it, I, it'd be tough to not walk into this and see this and go, you want me to, no. Cause it's, it's explain what, 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 what's up there, if you don't mind. So off the top of my head, I believe that we have 92 boxes of L Acoustics K2 in the air. Okay. With, 32 KS28s in the air, uh, 24 Kara for the rears, and then down on the floor, it's a bunch of Kara and X8s under the stage with a few more subs on the ground also. Okay, that's a lot of transducers up in, it is. in, in yeah. the air. Now, one thing I thought was interesting that um, Burton commented on was he likes to shoot for a 3 dB differenti difference, differentiation word throughout this arena and this arena is pretty massive how do you guys how do you do that from i mean up in the what 300 level down to here how do you keep that consistency so in a normal uh arena deployment you have mains and outfills at an end zone stage yeah. with this because the pa is distributed uh through the room and there's more hangs of pa we have a, a finer degree of control in each array oh uh, that to maintain consistency from front to back. How many different hangs you got? So it's uh, the mains, outfills, side hangs, that's all K2, and then the rear hangs are Kara. So you've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six? So it's eight hangs of mains and four hangs of subs. Got it. Um, so honestly, more speakers means more control for you guys. Exactly. What, what got you into to doing this? Oh man, that's a great story. So uh, for me, I was, you know, I experimented with audio and DJing when I was younger, but then when I, I remember going to a techno warehouse party put on by this guy, DVS1. A techno warehouse party? Yeah, when I was probably <laughs> 22 and I walked in and it was this old floodlight system yeah. from Turbo Sound, and just the bass was totally crazy. And immediately I was like, wow, what is this? This is, this is what I need to do with my life because it was such an insane experience to hear a sound system like that for the first time. Sure. And then uh, fortunately that guy, DVS1, I've, uh, he's been a mentor for me and I've gotten to know him. He's one of my best friends now, uh, but he just turned me onto this world of sound systems and sound system culture. And since then, it's just grown into doing this. Now explain to me, I want to hear your background as well, but explain how uh, your roles differentiate from each other. Uh, for me as a crew chief I, and front of house tech, I'm basically in charge of just making sure the guys have what they need okay. to get their job done during the day. Um, knowing the truck packs, how the trucks pack and unload, who needs gear where at what time. Um, and then with Burton, just making sure 
uh, building his rig, his rack and stuff, making sure if he has an issue, where to go to troubleshoot and do stuff so like that. So you're kind of the glue that keeps it all uh, together. I, yeah, I guess. Yeah. He's, he's the politician for sure. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> politician. And, and also dealing with the politics of a tour. Yeah, yeah. So you're the face of... Uh, yeah, knowing oh, yeah. when to go to production to ask for certain things and, you know, dealing uh, with the stage manager. You're the networker. And, yeah, I like little, it. A little smoothing here and there, you know. I right. like it. So what... Uh, Tell me a little bit about your backstory. What got you into this? Uh, it started when I was probably 13 years old in a church. I always used to sit with the sound guy because it looked interesting rather than sitting in the pew, so I would sit next to the sound guy. And he got sick, couldn't return to church, and they were like, oh, well, you sit here with them all the time, so you do it. So it started from there, and I kept with it through high school and part of college. And then at 22, I moved to L.A., got hired on with um, a company called Third Encore Production Studio. And I would, that's where it kind of took off from there. I started, was able to work with a couple big bands doing rehearsals and all the different production setups, and it took off from there. So, that's awesome. Yeah. 21 years later, still, still here. Still here. Yeah. On tour, a lot of things happen, so we had to take a quick break for our sound check. So we're going to jump back into uh, talking about your tools and the different tools that you use here. There's a lot of screens, and let's start with the most colorful screen. Tell uh, me about it. That would be uh, L Acoustic Sound Vision right here. This is where the PA design starts for every show. So using this 3D modeling here, I can simulate how the sound is going to be in the venue. I use this to get all of uh, the angles for the PA, where it's aiming, make sure that everything's covered. Uh, and then in here, I can use these different graphs and charts to make sure that it sounds consistent everywhere. So here you can see where all of the speakers are aiming. Here you can, these two lines, this is the high frequency, and then this is the low mid. So really what I'm doing is making sure that these two lines stay parallel so that Burton's mix is presented consistently everywhere in the venue. And the one on the bottom right? Uh, over on the bottom right, this is the frequency response graph. So this is the simulation of what each set of speakers is going to be doing. Uh, so once this file is finished here, there's all of this information for the filters that I take and I export to this file right here. This is Network Manager from L Acoustics. This is what I use to control all of the amplifiers. So these uh, white boxes that say AVB, those are all of our amps. All these black boxes are the groups for each different uh, circuit of control for the PA. Uh, and then in here you can see, you know, all the different filters and adjustments that we need to make to the sound to keep it consistent everywhere. So tell me a little bit about uh, time alignment. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So how do you uh, how do you get everything all lined up nicely? Yeah, it, it definitely seems like there's a lot, but it's no different than any other PA system. We start with the side hangs and then we work our way forward to the outfills and then the mains. And we also time in the subs to, to make sure that everything is pushing cohesively. Uh, Besides that, the floor package is then time aligned to everything in the air. Uh, yeah. So there's, um, can you show, show the program that you use for, oh, for time smart. alignment? There is a bunch of squiggly lines. Can you walk me maybe through the squiggly lines and how those things work? Yeah, so this is a capture of one of the uh, K2 mains that we have using our calibration microphones. So in order to time align and tune the system, we use four wireless electrosonics microphones. Okay. Uh, so here you can see the, the phase plot right here. Okay. So making sure that everything is matching here. So each so color is another is a speaker? So each color here is a different microphone measurement. Oh, so these are different microphones. Taken. Oh, cool. So here, here we see that everything is in time. And then here, the fact that all of these lines trend together is what we use to see that we're getting consistency in the venue. So if you look over here in Sound Vision, you see this shape right here? Yep, yep. Th this right here means that there's a lot of sub. Yeah. It tapers off as we get into the mids, and then it's flat above that. Right here, you see the same shape with yeah. a lot of sub, flat. And then we have a little bit of extra taper off in the high end 
uh, to make it sound more gentle for the audience. So literally the idea is just to make them as close as possible, correct? Exactly, yes. That's pretty, it's not super complicated. No, it's just, like I said, it's just making lines the same. I love that. There's nothing to it. I <laughs> yeah. mean, if I can figure it out, anybody can. <laughs> no, no, you guys are way smarter than I am. Um, I have a question here. You guys have a very unique stage yes. to where you have an entire pit in the middle and all your speakers aren't even pointing at that. Could you show us that VIP area and how you make that sound great? Yeah, absolutely. Can we? Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah, so right this here. is your whole VIP pit, Yeah, is what you guys call yep, it? Exactly. Which is smack dab in the middle of everything. And now typically your speakers for concerts are gonna be right here, but you guys have opted to go outside several yep, different pointing ones, outwards. pointing out, but yep. also they, if I, if, if I remember correctly, you guys have it, uh, it's, what is it? Uh, left, right, left, then, right? Because you guys also do, to be able to do stereo. Oh yeah, yeah, the so stereo. It's not just yeah, a, it's right, it, right, right. It, it alternates between left and right as you go down the line. So, so when you pan, so that, it's still, yeah, you have a bunch mix. of stereo fields all around the room, which is all pointed out. It's all pointed out. Yeah, but you still get a little bit of stereo. We're in here, so, so yeah, in here, I think that. For me, system engineering is all about balancing the scientific and the intuitive. So I think Ooh, that's like, good. I a, like that. A, a lot of guys with more of a touring background, if they came in here, they would say, wow, this is impossible to time align. Yes. But for me, coming from nightclubs and warehouse parties, I grew up on you know, sound systems, like four corner sound systems all pointed inwards. So sure. as soon as I heard Burton's mix with the, the rolling bass line and you know, Madonna's music is all rooted in house music from the 90s. This is That's like something that, that I had been doing for years. Yeah. So I, I love this part because the way that we time align this and tune it is completely different than the scientific approach that we take out there. This is all done by feel. So I'm guessing by what you said, there's speakers that are pointing in. Yeah, so correct? I don't there, see any speakers though. So there's some speakers over there. Okay, well, yeah, okay, I see those. Uh, and then all along the runways right here, they're embedded underneath the stage, pointed inward. So you get like a 360 experience when you're in the VIP pit. Oh, that yeah. would be really cool. Yeah, so, so as she moves around the stage, you still hear her. You can always each do direction. Atmos in here, couldn't yep. you? Yeah. Oh, that's freaking cool. Yeah, we aren't doing Atmos or anything surround, Wait, I mean, you but could, it but... sounds like it's surround. This would be a really cool experience to hear. And then your subs over here yep. are for in here as well? Yes, that's correct. Uh, those subs cover in here. You also get uh, some energy coming off up there. And the subs you got are in cardioid, correct? Yes. So all, most of the energy the sub, is? Yes, most of the energy is going forward, but there is still some fancy, funky kind of time alignment going with the back wave of the sub arrays. Yeah. That's really cool, man. Um, let me ask you, is, it's a big stage that goes all over. Yep. Is everything mainly ears? Does she have wedges that are? Yeah, so it, for her, it's all ears, but there are some wedges uh, where the, in the main performance areas, especially for the dancers, there's some wedges there, uh, over sense. there, and then some okay. hidden beneath the stairs over there. Okay. This is great, man. Uh, doing system engineer videos has been a very popular uh, request that I've got, and it almost seems like a voodoo black magic that most yeah, people sure. don't understand for it. Uh, so I've really enjoyed doing these because it kind of takes the curtain away from it a little bit. Um, so I, I got a couple questions for you. I mean, the first one is for people who would really love to do something like this yeah. that are watching this and like, hey, I want to be where he's at one day. What advice would you have for that new person watching this saying, my gosh, I want to be able to do a system for yeah. freaking Madonna. So the first thing I would point them to is sound system design and optimization by Bob McCarthy. That is the book of sound system tuning. It's impossible to read front to back, but it's an excellent resource for anybody who wants to learn this. Yeah. And second, if you're interested in more like line arrays or sound for arenas, L Acoustics has a brilliant webinar series out there for free online where they talk about everything from basic setup to aiming PA, 
uh, all of the 3D modeling, the software, and you can find that resource at the L Acoustics YouTube page, uh, and then under the training webinars playlist. Okay. Um, let me ask you. So, if people want to be, maybe be an audio crew chief, what advice would you give um, them to maybe be in your shoes one day? For me, being a, you know, I, I came up, I guess, not old school, but I guess kind of old school. Yeah. It was, I started at the bottom. I was a stage patch guy, utility guy coming up to uh, monitor tech, to even mixing monitors here and there, to front of house every once in a while. Yeah. But I started at the bottom, typically patching a stage or flying PA as a PA tech, and then learning all the different jobs. So as a crew chief for me, what's been helpful, and I learned this from my other crew chiefs, that they knew all, every position on, on the tour. They could tune the system, they could go be a monitor tech, they can patch a stage, they could fly a PA, they could run feeder if needed to be, you know, they were able to do all the jobs. And so yeah. for me, that's how I came up. It's like, I learned every position on the tour, or on the audio crew. Yeah. You know, if I needed to do RF, I could jump in and do RF. If I, you know, patch monitors, whatever needed to be done, I can leave front of house and go help out if there's an emergency. So as a crew chief for me, learning from the other crew chiefs that were able to do that yeah. also, that's where I kind of got, learned my chops was like, oh wait, I'm seeing the guy I look up to, the crew chief out front of house, sure. that's also the system engineer. And he's been, he's able to do all that. So that's kind of, I was like, I wanted to be able to do that. So sure. for me, I just, you know, I'm gonna learn every position on the tour. That way, as a crew chief, if they have a problem in the modern world, I go, oh, okay, I know exactly what you're talking about, I can help you. Yeah. If they have a problem RF world, oh, I know exactly what you need. And rigging, flying the PA, oh, we have an issue with the motor, cool, I can help out with that. Or, especially if something up front of house, something goes bad up front of house, wrong, I can jump in and help out and be able to float and help out my crew as best as possible. So let me, let me ask you, you guys this as well. Um, you guys are, how much of this is tactical knowledge and how much of it is for lack of better words, being a good hang. Um, because there's definitely oh, a, uh, a relationship that you guys have to have oh, yeah. with you guys and also with him. Uh, do you think it's more valuable to be a more personal person or do you feel like it's more valuable to be very, very smart and tactical with what you do? I feel like it's, it's like a, 50 -50? a mixture of all of it. Um, you, know, you have you guys out there that are just, you know, all about work and it's just no fun and, and it's great, they do a great, at their job. It's when you can have fun, have a relationship. Even yeah. if you guys are being serious and getting work done, you can crack a joke and, and lighten someone's day. Yeah. You know, by being a smart ass or something. Like <laughs> and we have a lot of them on this crew. Like and not just audio, lighting, video. Everyone is just we give each other all crap. Yeah. And it's fun. And and for the long I mean we're here long hours. So, you know, when you're have a long day and someone cracks a joke and you're like, all right, that made it's made it worth it. Like yeah. so having that that family basically is what we kind of have out here since we're, I mean, with this tour, we've been out for a very long time and yeah. very rarely get to go home to our families. This is our second family. Yeah. And so we spent, I've spent more time with these guys than my own family. So it's yeah. something where, yeah, having that relationship and being able to have fun with all these guys outside of work even. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I wouldn't want to do it any other way. Yeah. So, yeah. What are your thoughts? I couldn't add anything to that. <laughs> that. <laughs> He didn't cover. Okay, uh, so you guys have been on the road for a long time. How do you keep yourself grounded? Because honestly, like touring is not a regular lifestyle. It's very different and you're rolling in a can with people very close to them. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you keep your sanity? How do you keep, you keep your, be grounded with it? Yeah, I think for me, just from traveling for music for so many years, I have friends all over. So I just try to step out of this world whenever I can to go see my friends. It's like this little like breath of fresh yeah. air when I get to remember that there's life outside of this. Yeah. 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 Like if I have a chance to sneak away, if we have three or four days off, fly home, see the kids real quick, fly back, just something to kind of get that reset. Or if I'm in a city and I know, oh, like I, I love cigars, I'll go find one of my favorite cigar spots and go relax and just have an afternoon and just myself, just watching sports on TV, having a cigar or something. You need to find something on a day off when yeah. we do get them to kind of get that reset. Yeah, hang out with friends that aren't on the tour or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, if people want to follow you guys on social media, follow your career, where can they follow you? Uh, I'm on Instagram at yeah. peoples underscore under slash Frank. Okay. 
at Instagram. Okay. You know, I just realized that we're not friends on Instagram. I know, I was thinking, After I was all this time. You guys are Every, friends. I mean, pull like, out your phones right now. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh, you follow any of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we sit what? next to each other every day, so yeah. I don't need to see Frank when I open <laughs> yeah, my yeah. phone. Uh, you guys are like, we're not actually yeah. friends. I don't know why you're asking yeah, this question. Like, here you go. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> uh, and my, my Instagram is at AndyFitton underscore. Awesome. Or you guys can come to a Madonna show near you. Thank you guys so much yeah. for all this. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Yeah.